All right, hello everyone, good evening. Um, welcome to my first YouTube video that I'm going to be uploading here in a minute. Um, I, this is crazy, I never thought I would do anything like this. So thank you all so much for the suggestion and thank you all so much for your support. I can't, I just can't believe where I'm at right now. So today I'm going to be reading the first chapter of my first book. It's called Landing. Let's just jump right into it. Bright light, two blinks, sore limbs leaning forward, admiring their first contact with the open air. Slowly sitting upright, a light breeze trickles up her legs, causing a chill. Overcast keeps the warmth hidden in the space far, far above. The base of the forest lays silent. She counts each breath she takes in. One, two, three, four. A bird chatters over her left shoulder as it spasms into another tree. The silence returns. The trees appeared frozen in an eternal stony state. The bark fossilized to harsh cold stone, but slate green leaves still grow. The soft gray light churns the look of dust in the sunbeams to the gentle, softly spun turquoise grass below her capsule. The capsule. If that is its name... Buttons and blinking lights and a beat that's barely audible until you listen for it. She turns her head to see a thin, wispy smoke tail dancing into the beeps and hums. She was not this craft's creator. She knew nothing of the extent of its damages. In fact, she knew nothing, period. Her head tilted back to her body as her arms rose. Her hands were clearly marked with the faded lines of life and a bit of sweat from having to sit still for so long. But how long? Where is she? Why is she alone? The questions poured in like a floodgate breach. An exterior screen sprang to life, sparking through the mild cracks. A map. Words detailed a horrifically vague location. You are here. Her nose twitched. That's it? The movements kept half of her attention. She stood at last to see the screen fully. Bones creaked. Muscles stiffened and gave out. Again. 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 Only here did she notice her dress, how tacky. Yellow as lemons, with strange dark pink shapes polka-dotting themselves in a feeble attempt to cover the ugliness. The silvery rose-gold frills at the base were perfectly stained with dirt and turquoise smudges. The grass is flaking in the dry spell the skies have given them. Must have been weeks without rain. She clicked her tongue, tasting the full extent of the dust. The, a tree offered his roots, though he never moved nor spoke and provided a painfully necessary support. But her legs could not hold the weight just yet, and her steps were sloppy as a toddler's. How embarrassing for someone who looks the age of a late teen, nearly a full adult. Desperate hands found their way across the soil to the screen again, now holding perfectly still. Ominous hums crinkle away from it to the ground below. What the screen had drawn was nothing more than another frustrating sign. A purple circle marking an isolated southern city, miles from the blue X of the forest. Her fists ached to puncture the useless machinery. The city being her only hope of discovering any answers, she rose again on shaking legs to stumble her way south. Turning her long, pointed ears to the wind, the sensitive tips that fluttered just past the back of her head found the breeze's direction. Follow me south, it coaxed. Her adventure has begun. Beyond the forest, there is no grass. So few fossilized beauties grow before the expansive dirt plains stretch their bodies before her. The land rolled to expose the jutting crystals that were just barely greener than the grass of the forest. They reached the heights of buildings, visible from a hundred miles away. Below them may lie patches of green leaves as big as a hand, with fresh purple blooms so dark they could see through you. The flowers harness tough, thick petals to survive the odd weather the valley holds. The sight stretched so far that her eyes started spinning, and her ears twitched in protest of this sudden discomfort. She had to duck her delicate head before she became dizzy. Staring almost directly at the tips of her exposed, dirt-soaked toes, she let her ears guide the way. The wind became more and more joyous, as though multiple warm, laughing voices from children called her name. Her name. Does she have a name? This girl, a child of the forest, a sister to the fossils, held flying machines as her roots. Nothing more. The thing never suggested she was the owner of a name. Perhaps the owners of the city could provide her with one. One foot in front of the other, on and on, until day became night and night became day again. 
a mindless zombie with a head hanging heavily downwards. On and on she carried herself. Day became night, night became day. The days traveled on, gradually dawning warmer and warmer. Sweat beaded on her forehead throughout it all, but she thought it better to carry on through the annoyance than to slow down. Nearly a calendar week passed by. Eight of the nine days sent the star on its endless cycle. With each passing day, the girl noticed strange pains in her body. She couldn't pinpoint the reason for why they were trying to slow her journey. Her stomach and her throat hurt the worst, to the point where it became hard to breathe. Irritation for the endless march dragged its way up her shoulders and kept her legs from freezing up to exhaustion through one more dance of the bright sky-kissed magenta moon above her head. The morning brought settling clouds, and midday called the rain. Enough was just enough. Bright light, loud sound, feet pounding a high speed against the ground. By this final evening, the city slid into view. The rain held its grip on her body firm. Her mad dash never faltered. Over the bridge, straight through the dead stone town. Dead town? The shock tripped her, a devastating facial collision into the well-paved road below. Her hands stuck stiff straight above her head, the last straw. Time to throw in the towel, her first few days of life, and this is all she has to show for it? Broken equipment, zero memories, a map riddled in lies, an ocean of rainwater pooling in her tattered dress. Pathetic sighs and sniffles leaked into the stones that bashed against her miserable face. Click, creak, gasp. Now what's all this? Oh my! The girl curls bolt upright faster than the lightning that scattered this city's people indoors. Embarrassment painted her face the color of burns. Suddenly she wasn't so cold. Her hands found comfort in curled fists glued, stuck glued to her knees. Another's feet pattered out to meet her, and a towel fluttered over her defeated frame. A stubbly elder stood above her, the darkness wrapping her enough to make the girl squint to see. The porch light behind her unleashed its warming glow. The strangers gathered her inside. With the creak of the door closing her into this elderly couple's home, the girl decided to forget the tumble that marked her cheeks with mud. She clutched the towel tighter, afraid of the world she was thrown into so unwillingly. She spoke all in one daring breath. Good to meet you. A little bow fell out of her. I was instructed to wander here. Thank you for inviting me in. I fear I have no name. The soaked and cold child shivered with the words gone. Her toes tapped a little from her nerves. The elderly woman only leaned in closer. The surprise and wonder in her face spread too deep for her to properly hear the appreciative greeting. My goodness, you look just like your uncle. The girl's ears had to tip forward with the rest of her body, or else the whispers would be lost to the thin air between them. The old man did little more than shuffle through a collection of flowery mugs in the background. Perhaps he got lost. With her hosts trapped in their respective time loops, the girl took a good scan of the house she was set to rest in. From around the corner to her left, the carefully crafted dinner that's nearly ready to come out of the oven made her nose twitch with glee. Her stomach decided to undergo a strange ripple. If she wasn't so scared to spook the couple, she would have shrieked and poked at herself to force her stomach to stop its pains. Only a sharp inhale created a new sound. Bread was already on the table they had set with a bright tablecloth. The tablecloth, yellow, pink, white. It has clearly seen too much of the local star's radiation. The familiarity allowed her breath to finally settle. She could at last accept the welcoming glow of the wooden floorboards below her. With the day fully faded, the house couldn't host much light on its own. Lightning flickered through the windows again, and the wind churned out its cheers, hurling rain back onto the house and making the lights blink away their injuries. The elements were practically begging her to come out and play. Her head paused its careful swerve to spy on another face in the room ahead of her. A wooden antique table guarded itself with a blue and green cloth covering, and behind the glittery golden doll statue and a tiny potted plant lay a mirror with carved, swirly wooden armor, diamonds and triangles swinging every which direction to pierce some circles they appeared to be at war with. The silvery shimmers on the woody, woody garden mirror reflected to show off a golden curtain of hair around her smooth, rounded face. Her ears still sat tilted forward to help her take in the mystery of her reflection. Most importantly was the detail that threw the old woman off the planet. Her bright pink eyes, a color unique to her and her alone. Eyes that created a whirlpool of shimmering neon color 
that scattered the pink glow onto her cheekbones through the dim light of the house. Young, delicate fingers trail along her peachy cheek, still stained with mud, in a fruitless attempt to take in the fact of her existence. Who's my uncle? The eyes drifted back to her hosts. Oh, my dear, there is so much that you don't know. So that was the first chapter of my book. I hope you all liked it. I'm so glad that I got to read this for you, and I'm very excited to read your comments and to hear any questions you might have, of course. I will be happy to answer them. Or just let me know if you liked it. I would be super happy to hear that. Um, I'm going to get going. I am hanging my phone precari precariously above my computer, and it wants to get down. And... Let me know if you want this to happen again. I would be happy to read the next chapter for you. All right, that's enough for me for now. Love you all. Goodbye. See you soon.